welcome to Dialectic Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be starting a long-term experiment in which I attempt to enrich dihydrogen monoxide, also known as regular water, into a, a, a water solution containing a high concentration of deuterium, also known as heavy water. Now, for those who don't know, deuterium is the second isotope of hydrogen, a hydrogen atom whose nucleus contains one proton and one neutron, rather than just the one proton that traditionally is contained in most hydrogen. Now there's a lot of cool things you can do with deuterium. Besides making ice that sinks in a glass of water, you can also uh, actually produce a uh, low energy output nuclear fusion reaction in a device called a Farnsworth fusion reactor. Now I'm not going to be doing that experiment today. What I am going to be doing is showing you guys how I'm going to set up my uh, first attempt at an electrolytic separator for rarefying and concentrating down deuterium in water. Now, as you can see here, my enrichment setup consists of a graduated cylinder, 2,000 milliliters, containing distilled water, and two electrodes that I've made out of stainless steel hanging from this piece of wood, and a couple of wires going off to a voltage source. Now, what uh, I have to do in order to make this uh, work is crack the water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. And to do that, I have to pass current through it. Now, as you know, uh, distilled water is not a particularly good conductor. So what I'll have to do is add some sodium hydroxide or common household lye to the solution to make it both alkaline, which will prevent corrosion of the electrodes, and make it uh, conductive so that electricity can flow between these hydrogen and oxygen molecule or water molecules uh, can break into hydrogen and oxygen and then the gases can be liberated. Now I'll be storing this in the long term in a very well ventilated area to make sure that hydrogen gas doesn't build up to an explosive concentration and I'm also going to be running it off of a benchtop power supply for the time that I set it up. Now because this is going to be a very long process uh, over potentially the course of weeks or months I'm only going to show you guys how I initially set up the concentration of uh, electrolyte today and how I'm effectively going to be uh, configuring the system for use in the long run. I'm not sure if it's going to work well or if the electrodes are going to corrode away or have other problems, but it'll all be a fun experiment and if all goes well, I might have a little, a little bit of deuterium at the end. So I'll show you guys next how I'm going to test my concentration of uh, hydroxide and bring it to the correct level to produce the nominal 10 amps of current that I want flowing through these electrodes. So I've measured out a few uh, spoonfuls of sodium hydroxide into this plate and I placed it on a uh, weighing scale which I've zeroed with the plate of sodium hydroxide on it. Now I'm going to add a little bit at a time, perhaps two to five grams at a time, not particularly precisely with this spoon, and I'll be making note of the mass each time I add to the solution in my lab journal, and I'll be using the uh, amount of negative weight value recorded by the scale as material is removed from the uh, pile to determine how many grams of sodium hydroxide I've introduced into the solution. Now this isn't going to be a particularly accurate uh, scientific method of doing this because uh, household lye is quite hygros hygroscopic, so it's going to be absorbing water vapor from the air and adding that water's mass to its own mass, meaning that my weight will not be exactly precise. Uh, if I really wanted to be precise about this, I could actually use the pH to infer the amount of hydroxide uh, ions in solution. But for the purposes of this experiment, I'm just going to be measuring out uh, small imprecise quantities until my amperage, as read by that multimeter, reaches my target amperage of about 10 amps. So uh, I'm actually not going to be running this particular solution as my actual feedstock solution for this experiment. This is just setting up the amount of hydroxide that I need to add when I actually hook it up to the benchtop power supply later on. That way, to get the desired amount of current, I can just measure out a certain mass of hydroxide, add it to the solution, and hopefully have it run smoothly on its own. So without further ado, I'm going to start transferring and making note of the solution, and I will cut, uh, the, cut the scene to when I've just finished doing that, 
and then I'll give you a last minute update on any observations that I uh, encounter uh, in this solution. Uh, I'll probably produ be producing a few more videos in the future about the progress of my enrichment reaction and uh, eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to show that I have some heavy water uh, manufactured from this process. So let me uh, cut to adding all this uh, lye to the solution and I'll see you in a minute. So as you can see, it's now bubbling away. I uh, actually brought the concentration up such that it would draw about five amps and it was reacting so vigorously that I decided to drop my target amperage from five amps or from 10 amps down to five instead. I think that's gonna be evolving plenty of gas to consume most of this water within a sh relatively short period of maybe a few days at a time. Now obviously the solution concentration is going to increase considerably uh, as, uh, as the water level drops, but I'm hoping that that'll be made up for by the reduction in surface area of the electrode exposed as that level goes down. I'm going to try to keep the water level at 1800 milliliters throughout the week as much as I can after I've set it up in the future. Now, uh, this seems to be working quite nicely at 5 amps. I ended up adding approximately 15 grams of sodium hydroxide to the solution of 1800 milliliters to get this to react at this rate. So when I set this up for long-term operation, I'm planning on applying the same amount of uh, sodium hydroxide to the solution as I have now. Uh, I am not noticing too much discoloration to the water. I am noticing some uh, black powder floating at the top of this. I'm hoping that's not my electrodes dissolving. I suspect it may be the machining oil from when these threaded stainless steel rods were originally machined and not the actual stainless steel itself. If it does end up being that the stainless steel electrodes begin to corrode, I can try scrubbing the corrosion off with some sandpaper and if that still doesn't work, or if it builds up corrosion too quickly, I may end up having to use a different uh, electrode like graphite or even platinum. So I'm going to uh, leave this video off here. I've got some hydrogen forming on battery power now. I don't have access to my benchtop power supply just yet since it's powering uh, another project of mine at the moment. But once I set up the real version of this and in the... Uh, in the long-term operating environment, I will make another video and show you guys how that's working. So hopefully within a few months, I will have some highly concentrated uh, heavy water and have some deuterium to work with in future experiments. Thank you for watching Dielectric videos. I will see you next time.